Good morning to your brothers and sisters. We want to thank God that uh, we are able to record this message so that you are able to listen to the word of God wherever you are at your own time. So we want to appreciate that you are always with us and we appreciate even your your comments, encouraging words. Thank you for that. Let us pray. We have come together in the presence of our Lord. So let us quieten our hearts and minds. Put aside our concerns and distractions. Let us open ourselves to listen for God's voice. For the word of God as for his people. We come together to worship members of diverse company with children in drought-stricken villages around the world, with people learning difficulties, with university students and their teachers doing online learning, with people in hospital, with people in isolated vi villages in the frozen countries, with neighbors in this church, with COVID-19 killing a lot of people around the world. Father, we come before you. We are called by your name. A camper no one can imagine or number, but a camper called by God. Let us remember the generosity of God who calls and who is present with us now. Father, be with us this morning as we are worshiping you. In your name I pray. Amen. I'll call Brother Ben to come and do the word of God, read the word of God. Afternoon and God bless. It's a... Uh been a, a great week and I uh, hope you're all going well as well. Uh, today I'll be reading from John 1, 43 to 51. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, were from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I to told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord in today's scripture. Uh, we'll get Johnson back to share with us what he has for this. Can't wait. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you, Brother Ben. Uh, <clears throat> my theme this morning is something good can come from Nazareth. Something good can come from Nazareth. I, I like the story of the young woman who wanted to go to college, but her heart sank when her, she read the question on the application blank that asked, it, are you a leader? Being both honest and conscientious, she wrote no, and returned the application expecting the worst. To her surprise, she received this letter from the college. Dear applicant, a start of the application forms reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. 
In our text for this morning, Philip comes to Nathaniel and proclaims that he has found the one whom Moses wrote about. He is Jesus of Nazareth. While we do not know what expression Nathaniel had on his face when he responded, I think that is safe to say that his response revealed a cynical sneer. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Answered Philip. Philip answered, come and see. Come and see. You see, the church has the same problem. The church is full of those sure of themselves. We may even get to the point where we believe very little that we are told. We sit back under the fig tree with a sneer of a Nathaniel and we ask, can anything good come from Atherton United Church? Can anything good come from so and so, from youth group? Can anything good come from a prayer group? People come in and out the doors of this church with critical eyes. Skepticism is not a modern virtue. Doubting Thomases have been around since the dawn of time. By nature, we don't want to be led. We want to lead. But in the church, it is imperative that we be followers. In fact, it is imperative for us, all of us, to be followers. I, 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 I talked to someone two months ago and I said, Oh, we believers. And he said, Johnson, I'm not a believer, I'm a follower. I am a follower, I'm not a believer. I'm a follower of Christ. So we are all followers of Christ. Nathaniel learned this. He was skeptical at first, but he was transformed. He became a follower because Philip invited him. Let me ask you, what was it that Philip saw in Christ that moved him to follow? That steered him so to invite his friend Nathaniel? Come and see. Come and see what? <laughs> Come and see. What did Philip see in Jesus of Nazareth? I want to attempt to answer that question this morning. Come and see what? Come and see what? First, Philip asked Nathaniel to come and see the souls redeemed. Come and see what is happening in the world. People are receiving salvation. The day before P. Andrew followed Jesus and invited Peter, then Philip invited Nathaniel. There was eight others who would Come, become Jesus in a circle, 12 in all. So this was just the beginning. Soon there were 70. The scriptures tell us that comprise an outer circle. The net of redemption that was cast was large enough in those early days. Hundreds were soon following. By the end of the century, half of the century, million, today souls are being redeemed in South America, in China, in Africa, at 10 times the rate of North America and Australia and Europe. The church swag is not yet done. The church is exploding. We are receiving a lot of people. But it was Andrew who made the first invitation to his brother and Philip who made the second to a friend. They were watching as people began to place their lives in the hands of this Nazarene. They listened as Jesus spoke to people in a way that made them understand their lives better than they understood them themselves. They had then seen souls redeemed just as they had seen their own redeemed. So when Philip asked Nathaniel to come and see, he knew Jesus would redeem Nathaniel as well. Come and see, he said. Just come and see. That's all I ask you. Come and see. I know that every Christian here believes that God can redeem souls. God can save souls. I know you believe that so. So I ask you from this moment on to live a Philip-like life. To live like Philip. Go out and ask someone to come and see. Invite them to Bible studies. Invite them to Sunday school. Invite them to worship service. Invite them to a church activity. I like the story of two birds, robins, sitting in a tree. I'm really hungry. 
said the first one. Me too, said the second one. Let's fly down and find some lunch. They flew to the ground and found a nice plot of plowed ground full of worms. They ate and ate and ate and ate till they could not eat anymore. I'm so full, I don't think I can fly back to the tree, said the one. Me either, said the second. So let's just lay here and bask in the warm sun. Okay, said the first robin. They plopped down basking in the sun. No sooner had they fallen asleep than a big fat cat snuck up and gobbled them all. As he sat washing his face after his meal, he thought, I love basking robins. Will we be people who have eaten so much of God's food that we sit and back and just bask in the sunshine, doing nothing? Or will we invite others? We will go out of our way to say to people, come and see. What has killed the church is that the church is only focused in the building, in the four walls. The church is not focused outside. We are not geared to go outside and bring others to Christ. To say, come and see. That's all I ask. Just come and see and you learn that something good can come from Nazareth. Go out and call others. Would it be a wonderful thing for each one, at least one a month, invite another person to come and see? I would age one person per month, not two, one person. Would it be wonderful if come and see become a natural part of our life and relationship? Wherever you are, you are saying, come and see. Come and see where I live. Come and see where I worship. Others need to know. Would it be a wonderful thing if each one, at least one month, we continue to say, come and see? Second, Philip asked Nathaniel to come and see the life transformed. And then he had a transforming moment. Philip had this transforming moment in this way. A moment with Jesus that transformed him forever. A moment where joy flooded into his world and made him want to go out and speak to someone. He found Nathaniel. But you can understand Nathaniel's skepticism. Look at what Philip is asking him to believe. He tells him, I found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and the one the prophets foretold. It sounds a little fantastic for Nathaniel. You almost can't find fault with Nathaniel. Jesus doesn't. He recognizes doubt and helps along the way. And now Nathaniel is transformed. I saw you while you were sitting under the fig tree before Philip called you, Jesus says. Now Jesus has his attention. Nathaniel is shaking in his sandals. Rabbi, he says. And here Nathaniel is this transforming woman. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. But that was, wasn't to be the only moment. There were more to come. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You are going to see greater things than that. Jesus was saying, come and see Nathaniel. That's all I ask, just come and see. And you will learn that something good can come from Nazareth. Come and see. And you will learn that something good can come out of Nazareth. But Philip tells him to come and see. As Nathaniel approaches Jesus, however, something happens. In the encounter, Jesus sees who Nathaniel is. And Nathaniel recognizes Jesus, who he is. This is a kind of God encounter. One to one, an encounter with God. In saying, he is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, no pretense. It seems that they are exchanging a kind of inside job. Acknowledge that both of them will understand. Nathaniel asked, where did you get to know me? Or we might ask, where did you know me from? Or better, how do you know my heart, what I believe and who I am? Who told you? How do you know? How do you know? 
Jesus replies, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Jesus has already recognized his ability for knowledge. The kind of Jewish student he is, what he is studying and believes in, and his ability to recognize and believe in the Messiah and the time to come, he has discerned in his heart. Nathaniel then replies, Rabbi, you are the king of Israel, the son of God. He has recognized the son that he has been preparing himself to recognize in his studies for years. He was under a tree studying the Jewish laws. His mind and heart were prepared not just to see the law or the words on a page, but to see the Messiah and to recognize who he is. Jesus knows Nathaniel by the revealing of his heart. Nathaniel recognized Jesus by the encounter of Jesus seeing who he is. So this kind of reflection of knowledge is the same way we know God. Not just by book learning, but in a very personal, experiential, knowing kind of way. And you will learn that something good can come from Nazareth. He began to know something. Then the third thing Philip asked Nathaniel to come and see. Come and see the heavens opened. Come and see the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. There are the words of Jesus to Nathaniel. And as he and the other 11 disciples spent the next three years living and ministering in their master, they saw the heavens open. As he became a follower of Jesus Christ, he saw the heavens open. When Jesus was baptized, they saw the heavens open. When Jesus was transfigured, they saw the heavens open. When Jesus fed the 5,000, 4,000, they saw the heavens opened and the spread of that bread. When Lazarus was raised from the grave, they saw the heavens open and bring life to dead men's bones. When Jesus died, the heavens closed and grew silent. But the stone, the stone, the heavens opened and the stone was rolled away. When Jesus stood before the disciples behind that locked door, they saw the heavens open. And the Lord redeemed that day. Redeemed you and redeemed me. And he will redeem all those who invite to come and see. Come and see. Now let me close with the story of the man with the two umbrellas. Dr. Gordon Tegerson, a Baptist pastor in Worcester, was crossing the Atlantic ship some years ago. He noticed on several occasions a dark-skinned man sitting in a deck chair reading a Bible. One day, Dr. Tigerson sat down beside him and said, Forgive my curiosity. I'm a Baptist minister. I notice you are a faithful Bible reader. I would like to meet you. After introductions, the dark-skinned man said, I am a Filipino. I was born into a good Catholic home. I went to the United States as a young man to start one of your fine universities, intending to become a lawyer. On my first day on campus, a student dropped by to visit. He welcomed me and offered to help me in a way he could. Then he asked me where I went to church. I told him I was a Catholic. He explained that the Catholic church was quite a distance away from the uni. But he sat down and drew me a map. I thanked him and he left. On the following Sunday morning, it was raining. I decided just to skip church. But then there was a knock on my door. There stood my friend and he was holding two umbrellas. He said that he worried that I might not be able to read this map. So he said he would escort me to the Catholic church. I hurriedly dressed, thinking all the while what an unusual 34 person he was. I wondered what church he belonged to. As we walked along, I asked him about his church. He said that his church was just around the corner. So I suggested that we go to his church this Sunday. And then to mine the following Sunday. He agreed. But somehow I felt so much at home in his church that I never got around to finding mine. After four years, I left. I felt that God was leading me into the ordained ministry rather than into law. 
I went to Drew University Seminary and was ordained a Methodist minister. Then I returned to the Philippines to serve in a Methodist parish. My name is Valencias, Bishop Valencias, Bishop of the Methodist Church in the Philippines. The hero of the story is not the bishop, important though he is. The hero is that anonymous young man with the two umbrellas. Whether they ended up in the Methodist or Catholic Church doesn't really matter. Go all the way to the beginning of Christian history and you always find this hero. He is behind almost every convert. That unnamed man or a woman with two umbrellas. That person with a winsome faith who builds a bridge of friendship with another person. And across that bridge walks the living Christ and claims another eternal soul. You can be that person with two umbrellas. You can be like Philip. Come and see. That's all I ask. Just come and see. And you will learn that something good can come from Nazareth. I mean to that. Come and see. Just go out of your way. And Nathaniel becomes a follower of Jesus. He discovered who Jesus really was and he wanted to follow him. Jesus already knew everything about Nathaniel. Just as Jesus knows everything about you, my friend. You may not have it all together as Nathaniel did. Except for his prejudice against people from Nazareth. That's all you know. Still Christ wants to have a relationship with you. Are you willing to take the step? It makes no difference where you come from. It doesn't even matter what you have done with your life up to this point. Even if you have been terribly prejudiced towards your background. It's not too late for you to change. He wants an eternal relationship with you. All you have to do is, yes, I want to follow you, Jesus. Yes, I want to invite someone. Come and see. And you'll see what will happen. Come and see. I urge you, brothers and sisters, this morning when you leave the platform, even when you are unable to do the walking, because due to COVID restrictions. I urge you to give a call to someone and tell them, come and see. Jesus is the same today and tomorrow. The miracles he performed, he still performs. Come and see. Come and see what Jesus is doing. He's alive. He's there. God bless you this morning. As you believe, in the ways of Jesus. As you believe in the ways of Philip and Nathaniel, come and see. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the diversity of the call of God. That we are addressed by God, that God speaks to us through the ways and actions of friends and family. Through daily news and ancient text through works of art and literature and music, through the nature and the life of the church, that is God calling. That there are people like Philip who enthusiastically take their friends to meet Jesus. That there are cautious people who need to recognize the call of God, like Nathaniel, respond only after airing their doubts and questions that God is calling them. That God calls people through their doubts and questions. Calls children as surely as older people. That God is patient with those of us who are slow to recognize the call. And that God uses the enthusiasm of Christ's followers. That God is calling God. We give thanks and praise. Bless us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us just thank God as we bring our offerings together. You can use your technology to give your offering. It will come on the screen 
It's not a must, but if you feel free to say thank you, Lord, you are allowed to do that. So use the account details on the screen for your offerings. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this offering you've given us. We thank you that you are always there for us. We thank you that you are God. We thank you that you have given us everything. And we have left a lot of things to follow you. We are followers of the cross. We are followers of Jesus. Father, we thank you as we bring our offerings to you, which reminds us that we are followers of Jesus Christ. Bless this offering. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. God, you speak to us all the time. Sometimes we are too busy to listen. Sometimes there's so much going on that we can't hear you. Sometimes you don't know what to listen out for. Sometimes you tell us things we don't want to hear. Help us to listen more carefully. When we hear the message, come and see. It is a message for us. When we hear the ways encouraging us to take our stand, to go out and invite others to come and see, it is the message to us. Father, we pray that you continue to help us understand and able to hear your call. Help us to know what to do with your calling words. Bless us, Father. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you.